Exponents don't only have to be integers. They could also be any other rational number, such as, for instance, a half or a quarter or even something like 1 over 8. As long as it's a rational number, it could also be an exponent. And then we refer to these type of expressions as rational exponents. Now, the laws of exponents will still hold for rational exponents. Such as, for instance, if you have a half, uh, 8 to the power of a half times by 8 to the power of a half, you'd still simply add the exponents. A half plus a half gives you 8 to the power of 1. If you have y to the power of a half divided by y to the power of a quarter, you would subtract the exponents. Like normal, half minus a quarter will give you y to the power of a quarter. Simple second exponential law. And the third exponential law, where you have x to the power of 3 over 4 inside the bracket to the power of 2 over 3 outside the bracket. Normal rule, multiply the exponents with each other, and then you'll get x to the power of 2 over 4 or x to the power of a half. Now, this also leads us then to the introduction of division of uh, exponents. Remember, there, the first exponential law, we added the exponents. Second exponential law, we subtracted the exponents. The third exponential law, we multiplied the exponents. So when we work with expressions with rational exp uh, exponents, we are working with exponents which are divided. Now, you may not have known this, but roots, such as square roots or cube roots, can be converted to exponents for easier calculations, like we've just said all to do with the division of exponents. Now look at this. Something such as the square root of x cubed can be written as x to the power of 3 over 2. And it, this is derived with the following technique. A square root always has a 2 outside the root sign, as you can see there. We don't always write the 2, but a square root still has a 2 there. And when we then write this expression without the root, the root sign, as x to the power of something, we make a fraction in the exponent by taking the number outside the root sign and bringing it in as a denominator for the, ex the, expo the root, um, fraction of the exponent. So this then becomes x to the power of 3 over 2. That 2 from outside simply came in as a denominator. So the mathematical rule for this whole technique is x to the power of 1 over n, in other words, when you have the exponents being divided, that n, the denominator, just simply goes outside the root sign, and you'll have the nth root of x, and just remember x, that number inside the root, has to be bigger than 0. Your number outside the root sign needs to be bigger than 2. Very important, you can only take square root and up, cube root, fourth root, and so forth. You don't have anything smaller than 2, 4 roots, and then obviously this has to be a natural number. It has to be a positive natural number, that whatever that is outside the root sign. But sticking within those, those constraints is a simple rule to remember. You, sim you take the denominator outside as a root number, or you bring it inside as the denominator of an exponent. Now just an interesting fact. No exponent can ever convert a positive number into a negative number. It can only make the number bigger or smaller. So remember, it doesn't matter how small or how big or how positive or how negative your exponent is, it can never change the sign of the number that you were working with. So say, for instance, we take 4 to the power of something. You can have it 4 to the power of a million, 4 to the power of 1 over a million, 4 to the power of minus a million. doesn't matter. It still will never become minus 4. Okay, and then we carry on, just observing the following, which we've already said, x to the power of a half is simply then the square root of x. So when you are given 9 to the power of a half, this becomes the square root of 9, which becomes just 3. We should know that by now. Then we also have exponent of a third, which basically becomes the cube root of x. So 8 to the power of a third becomes the cube root of 8 becomes the cube root of 2 to the power of 3. Then we take that 3 from outside and we bring it in as a denominator, which leaves us with 2 to the power of 3 over 3. And this is 2 to the power of 1, or simply just 2. And even if you have a bracket to the power of a fraction, a quarter, you get the root, put the 4 outside, and 
whatever was inside the bracket still underneath the root sign. When we talk about roots such as these in mathematics, we often refer to them as certs. So remember that word. We could also encounter the following negative exponents 2 to the power of minus 4 over 5. Now this would simply be take that 5 to the outside of the root sign whatever is inside is 2 to the power of minus 4 and we know from previous experience that a negative exponent becomes a fraction in its own right so it's 1 over 2 to the power of 4 and we are finding the fifth root of this fraction. So the mathematical rule for this now when we are working with a negative exponent and it's a rational exponent as well then it becomes that and it ultimately leads to that. The nth root, whatever was there below the line originally of 1 over m and then again m just needs to be bigger than 0 n needs to be bigger than 0 and it needs to be a natural number which means it should also be bigger than 2 as we can remember from previous experience. And just some more examples of typical um, questions or expressions with rational e exponents there we have an exponent minus a third there we have 2 over 5 there we have 2 over 3 2 over 3 3 over 4 3 over 4 just showing you how all of them basically become normal expressions for instance that one has x to the power of 3 over 4 this one has 2 to the power of 3 over 4 and now ultimately it becomes a number same with that uh, first one we had x to the power of 2 over 3 leading to an expression containing x or 2 to the power of 2 over 3 leading to an expression containing a number and then the last two terms are just the other way around now we are given the root with a number outside write it as an expression with a ex uh, fraction in the exponent same with that one 6th root of 3 to the power of 5 becomes 3 to the power of 5 over 6 old rule that we've talked about take that number outside in as a denominator in the exponent or the fraction in the exponent so now we can expand this rule that we've just had before remember we had the rule firstly there where we said if we have uh, the fraction in the exponent it becomes a root then we expanded it a little bit more to cater for negative fractions um, in the exponents as well and now we just use no numbers such as 1 over or something like that we have 2 uh, we have p sorry and q catering for all possible integers that's what the z stands for all possible integers so the p and the q the numerator and the denominator of the fraction in the exponent could be any positive or negative integer no fractions in, the, in their own right but together they will make a fraction but each one of them needs to be an integer but it could be positive or negative and then it's a simple fact taking the q the denominator outside the root sign and leaving the numerator or the p inside the root sign as the the power of the x